Gastric cancer is when malignant or cancerous cells arise in the stomach. This cancer can appear in any part of the stomach, and it's classified into adenocarcinoma, lymphoma, carcinoid tumor, and leiomyosarcoma, depending on the types of cells it originates from. Adeno means gland, so adenocarcinoma arises from columnar glandular epithelium. Lymphoma arises from lymphocytes. Carcinoid tumor is originated in the G cells of the stomach, and leiomyosarcoma arises from smooth muscle cells from the gastric wall. Gastric cancer is generally considered a poor prognosis cancer because it doesn't cause specific symptoms until later stages. Now, the stomach has four regions, the cardia, the fundus, the body, and the pyloric antrum. There's also a pyloric sphincter, or valve, at the end of the stomach, which closes while eating, keeping food inside the stomach to digest. The gastric wall is made up of four layers. From the outside in, there's the adventitia, or serosa, the muscular layer, the submucosa, and the mucosa. The mucosa comes into direct contact with food, and it also has three layers of its own. The innermost layer is the epithelial layer, and it absorbs and secretes mucus and digestive enzymes. The middle layer is the lamina propria, and it has blood, lymph vessels, and mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, or MALT for short, which are nodules of immune cells called lymphocytes, in charge of eliminating pathogens that could pass through the epithelial layer. The outermost layer of the mucosa is the muscularis mucosa, and it's a smooth muscle layer that contracts and helps with the breakdown of food. The epithelial layer dips down below the surface of the stomach lining to form gastric pits, and these pits are contiguous with gastric glands below, which contain various epithelial cell types, each secreting a variety of substances. So for example, foveolar cells, or surface mucus cells, secrete mucus, which is a mix of water and glycoproteins that coats the stomach epithelial cells. With all of these digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid floating around, the stomach and duodenal mucosa would get digested if not for this mucus which coats and protects the epithelial cells. Within the glands, particularly in the body and fundus of the stomach, are parietal cells, which secrete hydrochloric acid to help maintain an acidic pH in the stomach. There are also chief cells that secrete pepsinogen to digest proteins. And then there are G cells that secrete gastrin, which has a number of effects, including stimulation of parietal cells to secrete hydrochloric acid. Now, adenocarcinoma is the most common type of gastric cancer, and it originates in the columnar glandular epithelium. It's further divided into two subtypes, intestinal, or well-differentiated adenocarcinoma, and diffuse, or undifferentiated adenocarcinoma. Intestinal type is the most common. In most cases, it's caused by the bacteria Helicobacter pylori, or H. pylori for short. H. pylori releases some virulence factors, like CAG-A, that go inside the epithelial cells and cause extensive damage. The immune system detects this damage and causes an inflammatory response within the gastric lining, causing gastritis. As long as H. pylori remains in the stomach, it continues to damage the mucosa, and local inflammation persists, leading to chronic gastritis. When this happens, the normal epithelium of the stomach gets continuously damaged and repaired. Over time, the stomach cells in the epithelium change and start to resemble intestinal epithelium. This is called metaplasia, which is when one type of cells in the body changes to resemble cells in another part of the body. Over time, these metaplastic cells might accumulate mutations in the genes that are in charge of the cell cycle and cell division. Tumor suppressor genes, which normally code for proteins that stop the cell cycle or promote apoptosis, are the cell cycle's very own brake pedal, while proto-oncogenes, which normally code for proteins that promote the cell cycle, are the cell cycle's accelerator pedal. Mutations can occur in both. When this happens, metaplastic cells start dividing uncontrollably, and more mutations accumulate with each division. So eventually, these mutations might make the cells malignant, meaning they gain the ability to invade neighboring tissues and spread to distant sites. This type of adenocarcinoma typically appears on the lesser curvature of the antrum as a large, 
irregular ulcer with heaped up edges. Histologically, it's a well-differentiated cancer, meaning they resemble normal intestinal cells. Alternatively, diffuse type of adenocarcinoma can appear in any part of the stomach, and it's mostly related to genetic mutations in the CDH1 gene, a tumor suppressor gene that codes for a membrane adhesion molecule called E-cadherin. Normally, E-cadherin helps epithelial cells stick to one another, and it also transmits signals that control the progression of the cell cycle. But, when E-cadherin isn't working properly, cells detach and start dividing uncontrollably. This type of adenocarcinoma has an increased ability to spread and invade adjacent structures, so it's way more aggressive than the intestinal type. Diffuse adenocarcinoma can appear in any part of the stomach, and it can cause gastric linitis, or linitis plastica, where the stomach wall grows thick and hard, and looks like a leather bottle. This is the result of diffuse adenocarcinoma invading the connective tissue of the submucosa, causing it to become thicker and more rigid. Histologically, their signet ring cells scatter throughout the connective tissue that look, well, like a signet ring, because the cytoplasm has giant vacuoles that push the nucleus to the edge of the cell. Now, there's other less common types of gastric tumors, like lymphomas, carcinoid tumors, and leiomyosarcomas. Lymphomas arise mostly from lymphocytes found in malt, or mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. These cells, more specifically B lymphocytes, or B cells, are in charge of recognizing and responding to any pathogen that crosses the epithelial layer. So, a chronic H. pylori infection, for example, can cause excessive B cell proliferation, which makes these cells more prone to having mutations and developing lymphoma. Histologically, it usually appears as diffuse lymphocytes surrounding the normal lymphoid nodules and epithelial cells. Carcinoid tumor arises in neuroendocrine cells like the G cells of the stomach. It's a well-differentiated tumor that usually appears as a protruding mass from the mucosa, called a polyp. Although it mainly appears in the stomach, it can also arise in other parts of the digestive tract, like the intestine or the pancreas, which also have G cells. Finally, Lyomyosarcoma arises from smooth muscle cells from the gastric wall, and it's extremely rare. Under the microscope, cancerous cells can look like spindle, epithelial, or undifferentiated cells. Complications for gastric adenocarcinoma include metastasis to the peritoneum, to lymph nodes like the ones around the umbilicus and the left supraclavicular node, or Virchow's node, or to distant organs, most frequently the liver. The bilateral metastases of diffuse adenocarcinoma to the ovaries causes a particular tumor called the Krukenberg tumor, which has abundant signet ring cells. Other complications are paraneoplastic syndromes, which are problems caused by the primary tumor on other organs without necessarily being metastasis. Paraneoplastic syndromes include the laissez trela sign, which is seborrheic keratosis, or brownish spots all over the skin. It results from the stimulation of keratinocytes by growth factors produced by the gastric cancer cells. Polyarteritis nodosa refers to inflammation and necrosis of multiple medium-sized arteries, including those that supply the kidneys and the heart, so they can eventually lead to kidney failure or myocardial infarction. Now, cancer cells stimulate vascular and inflammatory cells to release tissue factor, which then activates the coagulation cascade. Therefore, there's an increase in blood coagulability that leads to thrombosis, or generation of blood clots. Trousseau syndrome consists of the appearance of migratory thrombosis in the veins. Finally, if gastric cancer grows near the gastroesophageal junction, it can cause a stricture that makes it difficult for foods and liquids to pass through from the esophagus into the stomach, which is called pseudoachalasia syndrome. Generally speaking, risk factors for gastric cancer include a family history of gastric cancer, smoking, alcohol consumption, and being obese. Also, the risk for gastric cancer increases with age. Specific risk factors for the intestinal type of adenocarcinoma include being male, H. pylori infection, having blood type A, a diet rich in nitrates, nitrosamines, highly salted foods, pickled or smoked foods, 
and conditions such as autoimmune gastritis and pernicious anemia and achlorhydria. Autoimmune gastritis is when the self-immune system attacks the parietal cells, causing inflammation. Pernicious anemia is a condition where there's decreased production of red blood cells due to a deficiency of vitamin B12. And achlorhydria means decreased or lack of gastric acid production. On the other side, there's protective factors to prevent gastric cancer, and these include a high intake of fruits, vegetables, fiber, and folate. Initially, gastric cancer can be asymptomatic. If there are symptoms, they're usually vague, like malaise, loss of appetite, and dyspepsia, which is a burning sensation in the upper part of the abdomen. Once the disease progresses, the main symptoms include epigastric pain, nausea, vomiting, and weight loss. In addition, gastric cancer can ulcerate and bleed. If there's significant blood loss, this can cause anemia. Also, the accumulation of blood in the stomach can cause hematemesis, or vomiting of blood. This can be bright red blood, or have a darker color like coffee grounds when the red blood cells have been broken down by gastric acid. Finally, there could be melina, where the discolored blood can also appear in stool, making it black. Other signs and symptoms include those of paraneoplastic syndromes, laissez-trilosine, polyarteritis nodosa, and Trousseau syndrome. Acanthosis nigricans is another sign that could be present and involves darkening of the skin at the axilla and other skin folds. Sister Mary Joseph sign is a mass around the belly button caused by metastasis and enlargement of the lymph nodes in that area. Trosier sign refers to an enlarged, hard Vier Cow's node, also caused by metastasis. Finally, if gastric cancer grows near the gastroesophageal junction, there might be dysphagia or difficulty swallowing. Diagnosis of gastric cancer is essentially made with endoscopy, which is when a tube with a camera at the end of it is placed into the stomach to directly visualize the tumor and take a biopsy. X-rays with barium contrast of the upper GI tract can be useful to identify complications like ulcers. And finally, abdominal pelvic CT can be used to evaluate if the cancer is spread to nearby organs or lymph nodes in order to determine the stage of the tumor. Treatment depends on the stage. For initial stages, surgery can be performed to treat the cancer. For advanced stages, surgery can only relieve the pain, called palliative surgery. Chemoradiotherapy after surgery is used to increase the chance of survival. Unfortunately, the overall survival rate is very low because gastric cancer is usually diagnosed at very advanced stages. All right, as a quick recap, gastric cancer is when malignant or cancerous cells arise in the stomach. It's classified into adenocarcinoma, lymphoma, carcinoid tumor, and leiomyosarcoma, although the first one accounts for the majority of cases. Complications like metastasis and perineoplastic syndromes like laissez-trilosine, polyarteritis nodosa, and Trousseau syndrome. Risk factors include family history of gastric cancer, smoking, alcohol consumption, and being obese. H. pylori infection is the most important risk factor for the intestinal type of adenocarcinoma. Protective factors include a high intake of fruits, vegetables, fiber, and folate. Early symptoms include malaise, loss of appetite, and dyspepsia. Epigastric pain, nausea, vomiting, and weight loss are later symptoms. Diagnosis is made with endoscopy and biopsy. X-rays with barium contrast of the upper GI and abdominal pelvic CT are used for further evaluation. The treatment depends on the stage. For initial stages, surgery can be sufficient. For advanced stages, there's palliative surgery combined with chemoradiotherapy.